except one. Essentially, Hawaii was, was taken illegally at the turn of the century. You, you have this group of guys, you know, the Committee of Safety, who, who overthrow the Queen and, and said they were taking over. It was a simple political coup. The takeover was engineered by a very, very small group of mostly Americans operating with the advice and counsel of some members of the United States uh, government. Sugar was a big business in Hawaii, and the primary business guys, they saw it in their best interest for Hawaii to become part of the United States. But on a deeper level, it wasn't just economics. Um, a lot of these men believed that no country really could govern itself unless it had a high degree of Teutonic people in charge, Aryans, white people. But what's fascinating to me is that the same key players who were involved with this overthrow of Hawaii's kingdom joined this surf club in Waikiki. And all of a sudden this new club pops up and in the front it says, for whites only. And you have these same players who were involved with this uh, overthrow that are now in this surf club learning to surf and going out into the surf and going head to head with, in many ways, the same Hawaiians that were involved. But the outcome is actually quite different than what happened on land. Uh, in the end, these Hawaiian surfers assert themselves and remain on top, and they sort of maintain their space and their, their chiefly roles in the Hawaiian waves. And it's precisely because of this history of them resisting colonialism in the surf that you have unique identities and a, and a sense of sovereignty, I think, and autonomy that, that accompanies these guys when they're in the waves. And that's what makes, I think, the surf zone a very unique thing. Surfing becomes a place where you could still be Hawaiian.